as an athlete, wherever you are in your life, professional level, you know, junior level, you didn't get there on your own. Your parents have helped support you or you have trainers and teammates that have helped you along the way. Right. Um, so I just think to, to stay humble and to give credit where credit's due is huge. We are back. Technical difficulties only test us to get better. That's what it That's is. Right. <laughs> so we were talking about nature and, um, and, and just, we were just kind of talking about that feeling that we get, that, ins that inspiration we get from Mother Nature. Just kind of talk about that a little bit more. Yeah. So I think um, just growing up, my family vacations consisted of going camping, spending time in the mountains, um, not showering for four days. <laughs> so I think that's where um, it kind of all stems from is that that's my happy place because I have so many great memories with my family there, my cousins. Um, and I would always bring friends with me just to share that joy and just how much fun we had. So I think that's kind of where it all stems from is just all the good memories growing up and then riding motorcycles with my dad was an amazing motocross racer. So just being inspired by him, you know, riding the trails and just learning from what I would consider one of the best. So cool. Yeah, that's really cool. So since this project is all about tools, what tools can you offer for someone who might not have access to, to all that stuff or someone who maybe is like bored with mother nature, like yeah. we're, we're, we're like, we're in such a screen generation. Right. I mean, even, even this that we're doing right now, right. like we're in our screens, yeah. you know, but, but yeah, like w does anything come to mind? Absolutely. I mean, definitely this doing podcasts, uh, listening to podcasts that have been done before. Um, and one of the things for me, I'm actually not big into reading, but some of the books that I've read are what has inspired me the most. Um, my, one of my favorite books of all time is called Relentless by Tim Grover. Um, he was, you know, Michael Jordan's trainer. And he, I just, that book gets me so motivated and so inspired. Cool. Um, so I definitely say like picking up a book that, you know, can inspire you or kind of lead you in the right direction. That's great. Yeah. Now, speaking of trainers, you know, I was going to say this to, for later, but since, you know, since it just came up, you train hard, hard. <laughs> you yes. know, you, yes. you, you train, you know, C could you talk a little bit about your mindset of, of training and like, and like how you enter a workout and how you enter a practice? Like what's, what's the mindset like? Um, first of all, our trainer is absolutely incredible. So I have to give him all the credit. Um, shout out to Mikel. I know that's what you're yeah. going to say. Yeah. Oh my gosh. He's amazing. Um, seriously, just walking into his gym and his setup is just enough motivation. There's times I get there and I'm like, man, I'm exhausted. It's been a long week, but then his energy and just knowing that we're getting the best training and we're training recovery all that stuff we're putting ourselves in a situation that um, we can compete at our highest level day in and day out and he is make sure that anything he's doing with us like we are prepared for whatever's coming our way um i i don't mean to interrupt you but i i have to say like he, his name keeps coming up you know i, yeah. I interviewed try try born right. and 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 uh obviously john hyden is, is shout out to john you know it, he's yeah. my guy but, um, and Ebby too, but like Robin, John's wife would, yeah. would, would say like, shh, you know, right. don't <laughs> like know. he's a secret <laughs> weapon. And Robin, I know you're, if you're listening to this, I'm sorry, Robin, but this is all about inspired living. And yes. thank you, Robin, for finding Mikel because, now he's, because now, you know, not just John, but he's, he's been able to, you know, serve so many world-class athletes like yourself. I have yet to meet him, but maybe one day I'll, I'll, I'll go yeah. meet him, but Talk a little bit about Mikel and, and get a little bit specific on, uh, if you can, without getting, yeah. sharing too many secrets, you know? <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, all the training we do is very sport specific to beach volleyball and then very individualized. Um, so for my teammate, Kelly, she's the blocker. So she does a lot more jumping and works on hand placement where a lot of the stuff I do is in my defensive position. Um, 
So it's pretty cool for us to go together, but yet we're still doing different things. Um, we do some of the same stuff, but it's very individualized to not only our position, but also our body. So there's times, you know, we walk in and he might have a plan of what he wants to do with us, but he'll see how our body looks during our warm up. And if he's not liking what he's seeing or he thinks that our warm up is awesome, maybe he pushes us harder. Um, so he's just very in tune with our bodies um, and our movement. And so, yeah, I don't know if that's specific enough. Yeah, but that's great. Very, yeah, he's just very in tune with each one of us individually always checking in, um, seeing how our body's feeling. And I think we could do a better job of like, cause he wants us to talk to him every day mm. you know, after practice. How'd your body feel? What'd you think? All that kind of stuff. So he's, he's just on board 110%. That's awesome. Um, going back to mindset, um, talk a little bit about going into a, a, a practice. Cause the, the question I want to ask you is what is an inspired practice feel like? But I, I yeah. guess I want to know your mindset on your way to practice, like going yeah. to, to coach every year or going to, to, right. you know, going down there, like what is, what's going on up here? Um, I definitely, I love going to practice because for me specifically, I'll usually pick one or two things that I really want to get better at that day. Yeah. So my mindset is like, okay, I'm going to pick these two things and that's what I'm going to focus on. Um, and then just, you know, talk to Evie, talk to our other coach and just let them know that's what I want to work on today so that they can't, the feedback is, um, on those things specifically. Um, and then my mindset is also, you know, if I'm not feeling a hundred percent, I have to tell myself like maybe I'm 70% today, but I'm giving a hundred percent of that 70. Mm, that's um, cool. And just making sure like, and maybe I tell my teammate, you know, hey, I don't feel 100% today, but I'm going to give you everything that I have at 70%. Um, so, yeah, my mindset is just to go in and to take full advantage of those two hours that we have. You know, I love that. At a couple things. I love that. Well, since you mentioned your teammate, let's talk about Kelly yeah. for a second, because uh, she's incredible. She's a world-class athlete like you. And, and I know her as Kelly Larson, but now Kelly Kalinske, right. um, um, and congratulations to her and, and Billy. But um, just, just talk a little bit about the inspired feeling that you can play off each other as, as partners, as teammates. Yeah. Um, I think to be honest, we are probably as a team, one of the hardest working teams in the world. Um, it's hard to say, you know, you like, you don't, you want to stay humble and you don't want to like sometimes put that stuff out there. But as a team, I truly believe that we are two of the hardest workers. And so to have that in a teammate, you know, even if we're apart, like right when the pandemic happened, I went to Colorado, she stayed here and there was zero doubt in my mind that she was doing everything she needed to do to stay in shape for whatever was going to happen. I was doing the same thing. Um, so it's just that trust in each other and knowing that what we both want is the same. And so we're going to put ourselves in a position to make sure we're staying in shape and we're able to you know, perform when the opportunity was going to come. Yeah. I mean, you guys are blessed that you have that relationship, that partnership um, to anyone. Yeah. To anyone listening who, who might not have that, maybe they're not a beach volleyball player. Maybe they're feeling lonely or alone, you know, what, what are some, what are some tips and tools that you could offer them to maybe find that in someone else? Um, I would, th I would say find out what that person needs from you, you know, mm. cause sometimes it's like for Kelly and I, we're both pretty even. We don't need a cheerleader. We don't need someone yelling at us. Um, but some people need that. Mm -hmm. So if you can find within your teammates, what each person needs from you, whether they need you to not talk to them, whether they need you to fire them up. Um, so if you can find out what inspires them to do well, then you can help in that situation. I love that. I think yeah. that's awesome. Um, it's yeah. kind of a, what can I do for you kind of mindset. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And that could be with friends or family or, or uh, at your job. Yeah. Um, I feel like so many people want to take, 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 Yes. you know, and if you have that, that, um, you know, that, that mindset of give, 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 um, it automatically becomes a give and take and it becomes a potluck, right? Yeah. 
it's yeah, like a, it, it becomes a more positive environment to be mm -hmm. in and mm -hmm. then everyone can be successful. I really like that. That's, yeah. that's great. Um, you did mention being humble. I saw in one of your videos that you got interviewed, you said that you, uh, that winning, winning in a way that's humble for youth athletes to look up to is, is important to you. Yeah. Um, why? I mean, I love that. Um, I just want you to expand on that. Yeah. 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 I think, you know, I've, there's a lot of professional athletes that I've looked up to over the years. Um, and then there's a lot that I just kind of look at and I'm like, I get very turned off and I don't want to watch them if I don't see that they're humble. If they, mm. just, it's that same thing of just like, take, 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 I deserve this. I deserve that. Um, and not giving credit where credit's deserved. Um, Cause obviously as an athlete, wherever you are in your life, professional level, you know, junior level, you didn't get there on your own. Your parents have helped support you or you have trainers and teammates that have helped you along the way. Right. Um, so I just think to, to stay humble and to give credit where credit's due is huge. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, since we're talking about humility, which I think is a huge part of success and a huge part of living an inspired life, which this yeah. is all about, right? Um, can we talk for just for a second on the difference between confidence and arrogance? Because that has something to do with being humble, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Um, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go into that. Like, what does that mean to you? I would say, and you know, I, it's, it's funny because I think that's something that it's kind of a fine line for me that right. I would say I'm more conservative on that aspect. Like my sister always tells me like, you're almost too humble. Like you need to actually, um, like know how good you are. And I think that that's totally fine. You know, like athletes, when you're a top athlete in the world, like obviously you've put in the work and you should give yourself credit for that also. Um, yeah, I don't, it, it's definitely a fine line. Um, but I think you have to be confident and you have to know how good you are um, in order to succeed. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you don't always have to, you know, you don't have to walk around like you're like the greatest gift to the sport or to the planet, you know, it's, um, it's the work and the dedication that you've put in, not just what you've been blessed with. For sure. What's been and, given to you. Yeah. And, and this kind of is a good transition to emotion because, um, there, that, that's a feeling, right? Like that, right. that it's more of just a, like a actual feeling of like, yes, I did the work. I went to practice every day with that mentality of um, I want to get better at these things. And yes, I was a great partner and I did this work. And so now I'm on the stage of competition and I'm confident in myself. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm not arrogant. I'm not right. like, oh, I'm going to beat everybody, you know, right. but. But you do have to walk on the court. Like, yes, I put in the time I deserve to be here. I know I'm good enough to be here. So it is that right. like, how do you do that without taking it too far to where people are like, wow, she's just. Right. She's so, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. So how do we carry that outside of the game? Right. Because uh, we can learn that's such a, the, the game provides such a great, amazing learning opportunity for us to practice that, which is being yeah. confident, you know? And so how can we, how do you, let's say, how do you use that in everyday life? Yeah. Um, it's kind of crazy because to actually sit here and think about it, the, just being an athlete has helped me, I think, be more confident just in my personal life. Um, I think you get put in situations that are uncomfortable pretty often in sport. And so when those things happen in regular life, you're just like, oh, like it's not a big deal. You know, I've dealt with this before or something harder than this before, um, which probably has more of a consequence you know, of losing right. or something like that. Right. Um, so I think just like using that confidence that I've gained on the court helps me in life to just know, um, you know, just to like be a good person, be a good teammate and just be confident in who you are as a person. Um, so that, you know, people, you're never going to agree with, the same thing as everybody. Um, I think that was something hard for me growing up. It was like, 
I always wanted to make everybody happy and um but you just have to like to be confident in yourself and know that maybe your faith or your beliefs your morals and values are yours and it's okay if it's different than other people love that yeah absolutely love that um I also noticed in in another video that I saw with you that you um that you said you use a sports psychologist I do oh man that's huge for me I actually if anything I think kids should start very young age with a sports psych I wish I would have done that way earlier in life because I didn't start using one until beach volleyball so until probably four or five years ago okay um and he's helped me a ton I mean in a sense of like him recommending certain books to me with whatever was going on in my life or in sport um can you give a shout out can you give the name uh yes shout out to Lee Hancock okay he's the best yeah yeah so um working with him the last I think I've been with him for three years now and the thing that I love about him is it's not just us sitting down and talking we do have those conversations, but he also leaves me with homework. I have to go research stuff or read a book um, and just do those things that will help me and give me more tools to use while I'm on the court. That's so great. I, I just yeah. had Dr. Mike Gervais on. Um, I haven't oh, published, yeah. yeah, I haven't published that episode yet, but he is amazing. I, I actually took a session with him mm-hmm. about 10 years ago. Okay. Um, when I was, when I was in the, going for the AVP stuff and, yeah. and, uh, he really helped me to open my eyes to see that this was way bigger than a pass set hit, you know, a, a way bigger. It's, it's a, it's kind of a, a life choice that you want to, um, be the best version of yourself at all times. And, and at least you, you might not be the best version of yourself at all times, but at least you're going in that direction. Yeah, right? absolutely. Does that resonate like, with, like with doing this work? Cause it's work. It's work. It's some of the hardest work, I think. Um, And to do it, you know, you do it individually and then you do it with your teammate. Um, And both of like with Kelly and I, we're very, like I said, we're pretty even killed. We don't, you know, there's not a lot of highs and lows, Mm -hmm. which I think is good, but it's also hurts us sometimes. So to be able to dial that stuff in, um, and be the best version of yourself, but also bring that out in a teammate. Yeah. Yeah. Which is leadership stuff, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that it's so cool. And then the other, the other cool thing I wanted to mention and I wanted to ask you about is I think the interview that I saw with you was, I think it was on the, like an AVP production, but I think it was before the 2019 season, Okay. which was last year. And then yeah. I, in that video you had mentioned that you wanted to win avp events and sure enough that happened for you in in seattle could you talk about two things i'd like you to talk about the manifesting of that which you spoke that out and you manifested that yeah obviously you did the work right absolutely get that part but the manifesting part which i think is so cool and i think that's a trait of a lot of champions which is like i am going to do this or this is my intention like speaking that out I want you to talk about that as well as the emotional side of, of winning. Yeah. Um, I think honestly, speaking it out is one of the scariest things you can do, but also um, one of the most like, I can't really think of the word, but it just like, it's daunting a little bit, right? Oh my gosh. yeah. Yeah. And it's that sense of like, okay, now it's out there. And what if it doesn't happen? You know, that sense of failure. Um, But to actually say it out loud, people hear it, you know, and then to go and do it is, there's not even words for it. Like, you know that everything you've done is leading to that moment. Um, Oh my gosh, it's the greatest feeling. It's the greatest feeling being out there with your teammate and with your coach and just knowing that we said we wanted to do these things and here we are at the top. Like it doesn't get much better than that, you know? Um, But then it also leaves you with this hunger and you're like, okay, we did it once. Now we need to do it again and again and again. Um, For sure. For sure. That feeling is so, you just want it back so bad. Um, And I would say like, from a mental or emotional standpoint it's like we kind of have a 24-hour rule so it's 
okay, we won and we've been working towards this. I mean, I was working towards it just on my own for five years. And then with, since Kelly and I teamed up in 2018, you know, there's been years and years of work put in to do it. Um, so it's kind of crazy. Like you get to do this and then you're like, okay, we have 24 hours to enjoy it. And then we're done. Like it's gone and we're back to the grind. That's cool. Um, so yeah. And that's with winning or losing. We have 24 hours to kind of do what we want with it. And then it's gotta be gone. And the finals, can you talk a little bit about the emotional management that you went through during the finals? Cause finals can be an emotional roller coaster, right? Oh my gosh. Yes. They definitely can. And I think one of the biggest things is to not look at it differently. It's mm. definitely easier said than done. Um, but I think every match that you go into, you should view it as the finals. Like what, you know, it shouldn't be, you shouldn't put more pressure on yourself because you're in a final. You should from day one, Friday, you're starting play that pressure, pressure. I, that's another topic, but <laughs> no, that, that, but that, that fits right here. Yeah. If you want to get into that. Yeah. If you're going to put that pressure on yourself, then it needs to happen Friday at your 8am match. So then, you know, that feeling and it doesn't feel different once you get to the finals, you know, you've already worked through um, those emotions and those jitters. And by the finals, you should be, you should be in your flow. You should be feeling good. Um, it should almost be easier because you, you know, you've played so many matches already and then it's just, you have nothing to lose. Like you made it to the finals. Let's go have fun. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, how do you, okay. That's awesome. How do you manage, uh, errors? Um, I personally do a 15 second rule. So first five seconds, I can be pissed off, do whatever I want. Second five seconds, um, I have to get back into, oh, so first five seconds, I can be mad. Second five seconds, I figure out what I did wrong. And then the last five seconds, what's my next role? Mm. So it's like, if I'm in serve receive, I shank a ball, I get pissed off. Then I'm like, okay. I didn't cut the ball off early enough. And then those last five seconds, I'm like, all right, serve, receive, pass the ball. Is that in between plays? Because there's about 15 seconds? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then on the world tour, it's more like eight seconds, right? Yeah. So just, just two seconds of each. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I love that system. But to me, to yeah. me, like, like uh, successful people or successful athletes or coaches – we have these systems that we implement, right? And then we allow the systems to kind of work for us. Right. Right. And I'd love that system. I wonder if you could just take that off the court for a second and just talk about a shank or something like that, something bad that happens in life. Yeah. The, the one thing that comes to mind since we're both, um, uh, we, we deal with parking all the time is a parking ticket, right? It's oh like- Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So well, I need to get better at in real life situations. <laughs> all of us, but <laughs> this is about tools. So like, you know, yeah. it doesn't have to be a parking ticket, but anything that comes to mind outside of the game that you have, you could use that little system that could maybe help. Yeah. Does anything come to mind? Um, you know, something that my dad has taught me since I was young. Um, he was always saying life is, Let's see, I don't want to get the numbers mixed up. 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. Yes. Um, so I think that's kind of how, what I use in life is like Love that. off the court, you know, you can't always help what happens to you, but you can help how you react to it. And yeah, uh, yeah. yeah it's on it. Like I feel myself like taking a lot of deep breaths and just kind of, you know, trying to relax and trying to find that happy place. And like we've talked about a lot, that's the mountains for me. Um, so even if I can just like vi envision myself in the mountains or in that happy space, um, I think that helps me. That's super cool. Um, this kind of fits in right now, but uh, meditation keeps coming up. Um, in, in everyone that not everyone but a lot of these people these guests that are coming on yeah. does that have you dabbled in that have you tried that I've tried it a little bit 
Um, it, for me, it doesn't really work. I just, I'm not somebody that, and I'm not saying this is only people that meditate, but I'm not very like high strong or, um, I don't get stressed very easy. So for me, like meditation, I'm like, I'm already pretty mellow and then to meditate, <laughs> right. I get like, way too mellow. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, and I know there's a bunch of different types of meditation and stuff. Um, but yeah, I haven't, the little bit that I tried, I didn't really enjoy it. So. No, that's cool. I appreciate that yeah. honestly, though, because meditation is it's difficult, number one. And number yeah. two, uh, something that Tribe Warren said that's coming to my mind is um, he called Hawaii a meditation for him. You know, he's from okay. Hawaii, yeah. but it yeah. kind of feels like nature and just being outside is a meditation for you. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah, I can definitely agree with that. Cool. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, you had mentioned flow uh, a little earlier. Let's talk about flow. Can you identify when you're in the game in the flow? Um, I, can't, I can't necessarily say, like, I know when I'm in it. There, there are matches that I've played or practices I've been in, and I am in the zone, I am in the flow, and it's incredible. It's seriously, like, you feel like you can't do anything wrong, you're making all the right reads on defense, Every shot you want to hit is going down. Um, it's, but to get to that state all the time is, I honestly, that's one of the things I'm working with my sports psych. It's like, how do I get myself in the zone and the flow more consistently? Right. Yeah. And, and I guess that begs the next question. Is it something that you can practice? Yeah, I absolutely think it's something you can practice. And I think there's tools that you can use uh, that you can implement. Like what? Like in a sense of the way me and my sports psych were doing it, because there was a practice, it it was a few months ago now, but I was like, oh my gosh, like I was in it and I loved it and I felt great. And he's like, okay, what'd you do last night? Like, what'd you eat? What were your thoughts? What would you do this morning? So it's basically like just me journaling everything down um, and just trying to figure out like where my mind was at the night before, where was it at that morning? um, And then how do I recreate that? So just kind of finding like, how did you get into it? And then how can you recreate that for every practice or every match? That's super cool. Um, Could you talk a little bit more about the journaling? Cause that's a main tool that just not to bring it, back to me for a second, a no. second, but just, uh, just thinking about that when I was traveling, I, I, you know, I did some traveling last year and I was doing that every day. I was like, yeah. and it felt so good. And I came back and I kind of got away from it. Um, yeah. cause I, you know, it's like emails, uh, you know, podcast stuff, work oh, yeah. stuff, just like constant yeah. stuff. Um, but that was a tool for me that really worked during that time. Could you like, could you talk about how it works for you in general, where it's maybe not so much in the, about the flow? Because I love how you talked about that, but like yeah. for people out there who might not be going for the Olympics or, or a, you know, a champion or something like that, like how can, right. how can that help them, you know? Um, I definitely think journaling, and I, I wouldn't say I'm super consistent with it, but okay. kind of like you, like I go through flows where it's like, yeah, sometimes I'm journaling every day for a month and then I go away from it for a while. Um, but I do notice when I'm in it, I, you're able to like write down how you're feeling and all the thoughts that are going on in your head. And I think it's just kind of an easy way to check in on yourself. Like why, you know, if you're having a bad day, it's like, why am I having a bad day? What's been going on? And you can't always figure that out. If you have it, like, you can always go back and look at it and be like, oh, oh yeah, I forgot that, that, and that happened no wonder I'm a little stressed out right now or struggling today, you know? Um, and I, like, for me, I'm more of a visual person. So to actually see it written down and my memory is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, writing things down for me is like night and day difference. Okay. Well, okay. So let's stay on that for a second. Cause I, I keep thinking about tools that we can help other people with. So yeah. do you like, do you do like a daily to-do list? Oh yeah. Yeah. So I'm okay. somebody that I have a planner and I write out basically not like hour to hour, but pretty much 
everything I need to do in that day. Um, cool. And people always make fun of me. They're like, that's what Google calendars are for. You can put everything <laughs> in your phone. I'm like, I don't, I want to physically write it down <laughs> and then see it. Cause then I'm also huge on checking it off. It's a good feeling, right? Like, oh my gosh. Once you do something that day, you're like, check, like, yes, that feels so good. It is a good feeling. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. And you, and, uh, would you recommend youth players or youth athletes or just p- younger people should start doing that? I do. I think it, I think it helps with time management and it just kind of keeps you organized. So you're not running around trying to figure out, Oh, what, what do I have to do? What did I forget? Um, yeah, I think, it, yeah. It definitely keeps you, it just kind of keeps your days smoother. Like, you know what you have to get yeah. done. You can always check back. Did I do that yet? You know, it's, yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's a great recommendation because it's one of those things that's like, yeah, yeah, it sounds good. Make a list, check it off. But right. when you do it, it is a feeling. It all, all this stuff is kind of emotional. It's, go, it's right. back to a feeling, right? Of that yeah. success that inspired like, oh man, I got that done. Cool. Yeah. You know, exactly. so, Yeah. Well, you know, before we move on to the, uh, to the lightning round, you know, one of the, you inspire me, not just because of what you do on the court, which I've had the pleasure of being on the court with you at some of those practices, you know, and those are, those are fun practices and, and yeah, yeah. And, um, (laughs) what's that? We got to do it again. Yo, absolutely. Absolutely. I'll, I'll I'll text Evie soon. (laughs) Um, but, uh, it's not just about what you do on, on the court. You know, you're, you're obviously a great player. Um, and you train hard and, and you go for it, you know, um, but it's also about, you know, how you carry yourself off the court and what you're doing off the court. I wanted you to maybe talk a little bit about your partnership with the Warrior Foundation, because to me, when I heard that, I was like, man, that is so cool. And not everybody will even think to do something like that. Right. Yeah. So, so talk about the intention behind that and then actually what you guys are doing with that. Yeah. So Kelly and I teamed up with uh, Warrior Foundation Freedom Station last year. Well, I guess 2019. Um, we are just, we are trying to figure out a way to kind, to inspire others in a way of like, it's bigger than volleyball. It's not always all about volleyball. Um, and so for us giving back is what makes it, it just feels good. And I think it has, it's kind of crazy. I mean, I know there's a lot going on in the world right now. So I know these last AVP series, a lot of players were teaming up with different stuff. Um, and it's just like, is it because everything that's going on or, you know, they saw what we were doing and it inspired them to do, to do something as well. And if that's the case, like how cool is that, you know, um, that so many players now want to give back to different organizations. So we teamed up with them and, decided we are going to give a percentage of our winnings to the organization. Um, so then it was also, you know, you're going to these tournaments and you're like, of course we want to win and we want to play well, but also we want to make money so that when we write a check to them at the end of the year, it's actually something substantial and that is going to help. Um, so we spent time, we went down, uh, they're based out of San Diego. So we went down, they have, two locations now at the time they just had one so we went and we met the lady that started it and then some of the vets that were living there at the time and oh my gosh their stories and just they're just so inspiring and just to see how they live their life um because most of them are you know they have ptsd or they're amputees and it's a life changer you know, and you, it's just crazy to be in that environment where you're like, oh, we lost a match and we get pissed off. It's like this person lost a leg and they are living their life still. And they're as happy as can be. Um, but it took a lot to get there. And thankfully for the Warrior Foundation Freedom Station, they were able to get back on their feet, um, and continue living a good, healthy life. So just being a part of that, uh, and they have a wheelchair basketball league that they put together. So we went and watched that one day up in Venice. Um, and we follow, we talk to a lot of the guys through Instagram and just kind of keep in touch. So cool. it's been so cool. And just to, you know, give them that check at the end of the year was 
a feeling that I can't even, I mean, yeah, we won the Seattle AVP, but like, honestly, giving that check, it felt so much better than anything that I've been a part of. It's just like, you know, that you're helping somebody else. Um, that's truly in need. Yeah. So. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Em, cause it, yeah. to me, what, what's cool about that, like the intention is really, is really the coolest part for me about that. But, um, it has nothing to do with politics, it has nothing to do with, um, like actual things that are happening. It's about what we can do moving yeah. forward. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why, that's why that really inspired me. I really appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for asking about it. It's, uh, it's something that we definitely hold dear to our heart and we're so happy to be, be a part of. Yeah. And I, and if there's any other players out there listening or coaches, you know, like, like let's all find stuff that we can contribute to that really resonates with us. Right. Absolutely. Cause it, it has to resonate in that kind of emotional way for us to even think, even to have the intention mm-hmm. to, to contribute. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Cool. All right. Well, let's get into the lightning round, Em. All right. All right. So these are a little, uh, little shorter questions, little shorter responses. Um, but if anything comes to mind, take it. Okay. Sounds okay. good. All right. How do you define success and what does being successful mean to you? I define success by whatever it is in life that you're doing, whether it's sport, business, um, speaking it, putting it out in the world for people to hear and to know. Um, and then you working towards it. I know I feel like sometimes to be successful, people think you have to be the best. You have to be at the top. And it's like, no, you, you put these small goals together and anytime you get to check one of those off, that's success to me. Love that. How do you consider the idea of failure? I consider it a learning process. Um, just to try not to be afraid to fail. Um, in those moments, if you feel like you're failing, what can you learn from it? Mm-hmm. seems to be a recurring uh with uh with champions champions I, I i feel like i feel like champions like embrace failure as like oh okay I, what can i take from this so i can win next time right absolutely yeah yeah exactly yeah it's pretty simple that's cool um but it's not simple in the sense where it's a mindset it's a practice right. mindset yeah right yeah and like for me it's not sometimes if i lose a match i can't watch it for a couple of days you know, cause I'm not going to learn anything in that moment when I'm angry. Yeah. So, it's painful to see it. Yeah. Painful, sure. man. Yeah. But yeah. Just being able to, um, sit back, let it happen and then go back and, and learn from those. It, it reminds me of Kobe Bryant. Cause I, I watched an interview with him. Um, the late great Kobe Bryant, rest in peace. Um, yeah. but, uh, he said he would go back and watch that painful stuff. Right. And he would yes. study it you know, uh, especially losing in the finals, right? He was just like, man, what, what, why did it go, you know, he, he would get like yeah. his, I don't know if you're aware of his, uh, his um, series called Detail, but he gets like super detailed on all this stuff. Yeah. 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 I think that's awesome. Yeah. And I've also noticed um, just cause there's more commentary in beach volleyball now mm-hmm. um, to kind of listen, like Misty May was commentating one of our matches and I'm like, I'm absolutely going to sit there and listen to see what she For has sure. to say. Um, for sure yeah, yeah. And it's those they're hard to hear sometimes because there are moments where she's like i don't know what emily's doing <laughs> <Don't either. laughs> that's funny thank you shout out misty may yeah. uh, you're incredible yeah. you're the goat yeah. um let's keep moving here what are the most successful habits that you do on a consistent basis uh i would say self-motivate and self-discipline do you want me love to go that. more details? <laughs> no, I love that. I love that because I, I, I reached over to my notes because I, I, on, I think I saw one of your posts. You said something like having an unstoppable motivational attitude or something like that. Yeah. Or just, can you go into that just a little bit? Like, yeah. Um, I just think that, you know, it has to come from within for you to be successful or, um, yeah, just really to be successful, I feel like it has to come from within and you have to be willing to make some sacrifices. Maybe you don't get to go out on a Friday night and have drinks with friends, you know? Um, and so to just stay disciplined in that and know that you might miss out on a few nights, but at the end, if you're standing on top of a podium, I think that's, for me, that's worth it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, what is the most important lesson that has helped shape who you are today? I would say not um, letting outside factors affect me. I think it's something that's still a learning process and I'm still, still working through. Um, but there's so much that goes on, especially in the volleyball world that is out of my control. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. I can't control if someone else is winning matches. I can only control me going out and winning matches. Love that. It, it reminds me of this, uh, this, another recurring theme that I, I seem to keep um, hearing and, and learning myself, right? Because I'm, yeah. I'm no master of this stuff. I'm just, a, I'm curious myself, but yeah. being unconditional, right? Being unconditionally yeah. inspired or unconditionally joyful, Absolutely. right? No matter what's happening on the outside world, like you said, it comes from within. And, and I yeah. think that's a amazing lesson that I kind of wish I learned a little earlier in life, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right? No, I agree. There's definitely been times where, you know, something has affected me and it'll affect me for a week or through a tournament. And I'm like, man, I need to just let that stuff go. Right. I can't control it. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's a really good segue to the next question. And um, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to read the, you, I'm going to read you the question and then I'm going to answer my answer first to let okay. you think about it. Okay. So okay. what's one word that best describes you and why? Okay. And so while you're thinking, um, you know, I have a phrase, I have a phrase that I wrote for you. So I'm going to put the, I'm going to put this other word first because we just said unconditional. So I'm going to put that in there for you. So unconditionally, joyfully, recklessly, relentlessly determined and hardworking. All right. now, I, I borrowed three of those from your, your Instagram. From my bio. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. I borrowed those. But I, I put in the hard, I put in the joyful and the hardworking. All those words just seems, seems to fit for you. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely, um, so I have to pick one word. <laughs> no, you, you, you don't have to. You can pick a phrase, you can pick a word, whatever it comes to mind. Um, or you could use those words too, because those are pretty much your words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would definitely say determined is yeah. a huge one. Um, yeah. I'm pretty stubborn, so when I get my mindset on something um there's not much that's gonna stop me that's for sure love that yeah um can you share the biggest challenge you've been through on your journey um yeah I would say for me a lot of it has just been overlooked my entire career um starting from playing indoor in high school I was a smaller outside hitter so I got overlooked a lot by big colleges that I wanted to go to. Um, and then once I transitioned to beach in 2014, it was like, Oh man, this girl, she's already 26, 27. You know, a lot of these girls have been in the USA program since they were 12 years old. Um, so how do I, how do I make an impression on somebody on USA volleyball or players? Um, when I'm so, I felt so far behind and just so overlooked. Um, but going through those, going through those situations, I feel like is now one of my strengths. Cause it's like, if you don't believe in me or you don't think I'm good enough, I'll, it just, it's, it's like in my head and I'm like, I'll prove you wrong. Um, that resonated with me because I feel like a lot of athletes or just people in general, you know, who want more out of life, you know, either want financial success or they want, to be an Olympian or they, they want, they have big goals. I feel like we can all feel a little overlooked yeah. at times. Right. And it's painful. Um, yeah. you know, I know we're talking about tools here. So if anyone's listening, like, and, and they're feeling really overlooked and they're not feeling underappreciated and they're like stuck, like, can you yeah. offer anything to that person? Um, I would say just, I think what has worked for me is just head down and grind it's kind of, it kind of goes back to, I can't control, you know, outside things. Right. So I can't control if, you know, someone gets handed something, I can't control that. Um, all I can control is how hard I work. And if I'm putting in the work and I'm being disciplined, um, those athletes, like people like that will end up on top. You know, it's, you can only get handed so much in life. Um, right. but uh, you can outwork and 
I think that's the biggest thing. Just continue to outwork everybody else. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and have tunnel vision too, right? Like, yeah. like super focused, dialed in. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And you, you've done a little coaching with, for kids before, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So uh, what's the biggest challenge you see for, for athletes that you've coached before? Um, I would say it's hard. It's hard. Uh, just coaching at different, like coaching here in California, um, because kids are, they start from such a young age. Um, I would say one of the biggest things is kids not understanding. One of the biggest things for me is I played four sports all through high school. So kids these days are like at nine years old, they're like, I am a beach volleyball player. I'm like, well, all right, you're nine years old. Like, let's not get crazy. <laughs> I love right. that you're, you know, that you want to play and you're into the sport. Um, but I think one of the biggest challenges is players feeling like they've fallen behind and then they push, push, push until injury or they get burnt out at such a young age. Um, so I just think it's important whether, and I'm not saying they have to play another sport, but maybe they're into music also, or just, there has to be, there has to be a balance. You know, there has to be something else that they're passionate about so that they don't just get injured super young or get burnt out before, you know, their college career even starts. Yeah, that's well said. What, uh, what sports did you play? I did basketball, volleyball, track, and tennis. That's awesome. Yeah. So fun. I miss all the other sports. <laughs> do you? Yeah. Do you I play do. any, do you play for fun? Any mm -hmm. of the other ones? Absolutely. I played tennis this week for fun. Um, and I love going and shooting around basketball. I don't really cool. do high jump for fun, <laughs> but that was what I did in track. So. Cool. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Versatile. Um, just a few more here. Uh, how important is the idea of having impact to you? I think it's huge. Um, I, you know, it's, I've looked up to so many athletes and it's like, I would love for younger generations to look up to me and me have a positive impact on their life. Um, whether that's on the court or off the court, I would love, like, I think that's why it's so important that you, how you carry yourself, you know, cause people are watching all the time and you have no idea who you're, who you're helping or who's actually watching. So I just think, sure. um, yeah, to be able to have that positive impact on, on especially young kids or people that are struggling is, is huge. Yeah, totally. And we're hoping to have, you know, a, a ton of positive impact from this conversation Definitely. right here, yeah. you know, yeah. hopefully anyone listening to this, you know, or, or watching on YouTube, you know, you can just relate. Like, I think for me, a lot of this is my, my challenge specifically is to get someone to relate to you, you know, right. like who's not, right. not just an AVP champion or in the Olympic race, you know, like, you know, cause that's like, that's amazing. You're an amazing person, you know, but right. like someone who's not doing that, how can they still practice these things? How can they find, right. how can they take all these things that we're talking about and relate them back to their life? You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received and why from who? Um, I would definitely say the 90, 10 from my dad is a huge part. And then, um, a quote that one of my friends from high school shared with me was to give anything less than your best is to sacrifice the gift. Um, and that to me just, it resonates. Um, yeah. And that's what, going back to like mindset when I go to practice, it's like, yeah, I'm giving everything I have because mm -hmm. I have this gift mm -hmm. and that I was blessed with. And I want to um, make sure that I give it my all and, you know, inspire people along the way. I love it. Yeah. Uh, Emily, what is your ultimate why? To find something that is just brings me so much joy and that I'm so passionate about, it really is kind of like, why would I not pursue that, you know? Um, and to just 
I, I've met so many incredible people along this journey and along my path, flying international, making friends over there, um, being able to inspire kids and coach kids and help beach volleyball become a bigger sport. Um, yeah, so to me, it's just like, uh, it's something that is in my heart and that I love. So why would I not share that with mm. the rest of the world? So cool. Yeah. I, I, I really appreciate the sharing part of it because I feel like we're a big part of my project here. And I think you, you know this, but I, I'm just going to say it is a big part of this is, is to allow my message to come forward and, and to share it and to allow, you know, people like you to share your message too and to let everybody know that it's okay to share you know and we don't need to be afraid of like judgments or other people's opinions like uh something dr mike gervais said is fopo fear of other people's opinions and how that could be holding people back so so i think yeah i think it's so beautiful that 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 is part of your why is to like yeah it's in me and it could help others so let's share it you know yeah yeah absolutely yeah that's awesome. Um, a la- last question for you, uh, fulfillment. You know, what does fulfillment mean to you? I would say fulfillment means just kind of going all in and knowing that, just trusting it. Um, because once you do that, once you go all in and you trust the process, you will be fulfilled. And it's kind of that, like, there's a lot of beach volleyball players, you know, that have started the journey and then it's like, they never really make it just because they're kind of one foot in one foot out. It's like, I want to do this, but I don't want to lose money or I want to do this, but I don't want to put that much work into it. Right. Um, so I think just like trusting it and going all in um, and you will, you will see results and you will, you will absolutely be fulfilled. Amen to that. Hey, Mike, drop. <laughs> wow. Yeah, seriously. Emily, that, that was great. Um, what an what a amazing conversation. Um, that was awesome. That was yeah, so fun. And that was so fun. Yeah. That's um, a different spin on just, yeah. Like, it's not just volleyball. It's life and inspiring and sharing. And I love it. That was yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for, um, you know, being a guest and, and being a part of this project. And before we go, I wanted to let you, you know, um, mention any Instagram handles or websites or sponsors or any of that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I'll shout out my sponsors. Um, PowerDot is amazing. And if you guys want one, you can use code Stockman to get 20% off. Cool. Um, great recovery tool. And then... There's actually a couple more um, sponsorships that are in the works right now. So if you guys want to follow along on my Instagram at eStock2, all that will be dropping in the next couple weeks. So that's exciting stuff. Awesome. Well, hey, best of luck to you in the uh, you. the Olympic journey that's that that you're on right now, and uh, you and Kelly and yeah. and um, I'm watching. I'm a part of it. I'm a fan. You know, Thank I'm a, you I'm a so friend. Much. Yes, we gotta get you back out there. <laughs> yes, I'll be back soon. So uh, don't go anywhere. But uh, I'm just ra- I'll just wrap this up. And uh, once okay. again, thank you so much, Emily. Good. Thank you. Okay. Bye. This episode is brought to you by DAF Global. If you're looking to start a podcast or you have a podcast and you're looking for editing services, hit up my guys, Oliver and Garrett at DAF Global. They're awesome. They help me with this podcast and they take care of all kinds of different services like editing and audio enhancement. And they're great to work with. They're also offering a 10% discount to all within the game listeners. So hit my guys up at DAF Global on Instagram and also on their website, www.dafglobal.com dot co dot uk